Hello, this is Walter Leite, and in this video, I'll demonstrate how to do metric versus scalar invariance testing in M plus using a manual procedure. Um, M plus does have uh, configurable versus scalar uh, invariance testing for categorical variables using an automated procedure, um, but here. Um, we have categorical variables and we use a, a manual procedure that's not available uh, automatically in plus okay so um the first step is to fit the least constrained uh confirmatory factor analysis model which is the metric invariance model so here this is the code i am fitting a model using uh data from the school and staffing survey and uh, I am testing for measurement invariance across two groups of teachers, teachers that are in a network and teachers that are not in a network. And uh, the, the specification of the grouping variable it's called treat here we, where one means network zero means not in a network uh, these are my indicators of the latent variables and all of them are categorical so they have uh in this case four categories now i'm using the wlsmv estimator which is the default m plus for categorical variables so this is my cfa model here um uh, the i have uh, perception of school management is the first latent variable perception of family background is the second perception of student delinquency is the third perception of student participation is the fourth and perception of teacher support is the fifth so it's a five factor cfa uh, i am scaling the latent variables by fixing the factor variances to one and to do that i had to free the first factor loading because in M plus by default the first factor loading is fixed to one okay now this is the metric invariance model which means that i have factor loadings that are the same across groups but i have thresholds that are allowed to vary across groups so i uh, declare the model for network here which is just to specify what's the difference between the models. And so I have three thresholds because they are, each item has four categories. However, for identification, I need to set the first threshold for each item to be equal across groups. So I can only test invariance for the for two or out of the three thresholds. So here, I declare the first threshold for all items, so I'm allowing them to vary between groups, and I declare the second threshold for all items, allowing them to vary between groups. So here I choose that the third threshold that I don't mention here will be the same across groups. So that's a limitation of uh, testing um, for metric invariance in the thresholds. Okay. Now, because I'm using the WLSMV estimator, the traditional chi square difference test does not work. Um, therefore, I have to use the save data command to save the derivatives of the parameters so that I can use this for the, um, the chi square difference test. So here, I, call the, I use the option diff test. And I, I name my file with the relatives, the real method dot that. Okay. So we'll run this model. Scroll it down past the you know, scriptures here. Okay, here is my model fit, which shows that the model 
Does it have exact feet by the case square, but it does have closed feet shown by CFI to Allah. Uh, and check that I got what I want in terms of cold space. Let's look at the first factor loading for perceptual school management is 0.853. Now, if we scroll down to the network group, it's 0.8532. So I have factor loadings here that are equal across groups. Now, let's look at the first and second threshold. The first threshold here is for the no network group is 0 0.131. And for the second group, the first threshold is 0.105. So I got a different first threshold. Uh, now let's look at the third threshold. For the third threshold, I did not set to be. So the third threshold for the first item is 1.757. And for the second group, it is also 1.757. So here I only have the first and second threshold to be equal to so now. We close this file, and the second file is uh, a multiple group CFA with scalar invariance. Now, that's the default inputs, so it's a little bit easier to specify. Uh, I specified the grouping variable here, uh, which is three to with network and all that work as the groups. Uh, now, the difference here is in the analysis section, besides estimated with WSLV, I mentioned the diff test command, which requires a chi square difference test. And I mentioned the file that I saved the previous analysis with the first digits. Now, this is enough to trigger the chi square difference test. Now, for the model, I have the standard CFA model in plus. Uh, which will specify scaling variance. In other words, it will constrain all the loadings and the thresholds to be the same across groups. The only departure here from the standard model is that I, I set the first, uh, the factor variance to one, and I free the first factor. So I run this. And once I scroll past the scriptures, here I have uh, the chi square difference test. So the chi square difference test is 47.623, and it's not statistically significant. Therefore, uh, this more restricted model with uh, low diesel thresholds fixed to be the same fits as well as the model where I had the first and second thresholds allowed to fit. Okay. Now I have here the rest of the fit of the model, which also shows close. So uh, this is how you uh, run a chi square difference test between method in scalar invariance with the variables in a